Hello folks, Tara Bachland here with the Matthew Wood Institute of Herbalism, and we are recording some new classes behind the scenes. Usually we're recording live classes, but we're doing it behind the scenes to get some extra content done, and we thought we'd give you a sneak peek. So here Matt will be sharing with us about cleavers. Greetings, folks. This is one of my favorite herbs. And there are some pictures. That's so close up. I've never actually seen it that close up myself. Uh, it would be nice that stock is fairly sharp edged, which is always a signature for the um, nervous system. Like the edge is sharp when you feel sharp edged, when your nerves are acting up. Um, so actually, if you were to grab hold of that, those clusters of the plant by the fence there, and you could just pull them right out of the ground. They, they just, they almost want to go with you more than they want to go with more than they want to stay with where they are, it seems like, and they cleave to you. That's how it gets its name. You, you can stick it onto your clothing and it just sits there. Um, the little teeny inoffensive stickers. I suppose it's one way to disseminate seed. There's little white flowers, which are, um, well, where I am, it'd be like May. And then if you went down in a cool, darker place and you missed your May gathering, they'd still be there in June in the cooler, darker place. And little white flowers. And then they, when they've gone to seed, no good. Not for herbalism. They go to seed and they uh, look like they look like teeny, two teeny little testicles, actually. They're little twin pairs like that. And, and it is a male tonic. And um, so uh, it is. Um, uh, so when it's gone to, to seed, it loses its nice vanilla, like, oh, nice flavor and, and smell. And actually, those little seeds are full of caffeic acid. And if you roast them, you'll get coffee. They are a cousin. This is in the coffee family, Ruby, A-C-E. And that is coffee as well. So they have the coffee taste and smell. So one of my friends, she dreamed about the apocalypse. This is like 25 years ago. And she said the hardest thing was for the coffee addicts to deal with not having their coffee. Well, so here, you can gather your cleavers. Let it go to seed. I don't know anybody who's done that except my a bunch of us herbalists tried it once. And it, why? Well, yeah, that was it. That was the taste. And um, so uh, you gather it before it, well, it's still in flower, before flowering, maybe even, but it's not very big then. Well, you gather it mostly once in flower. If you want to dry it, it's hard to dry like. If you're lucky enough to own a greenhouse with the sun has been beating in and you put it in there and it just dries out really quickly or your car is out in the sun and it's all hot in there and you can put the cleavers in there and dry it out really quickly so it doesn't go to seed or you tincture it immediately so it doesn't go to seed so going to seed wrecks it as a medicinal herb generally unless you like to use it for coffee Okay, um, so that's the general background there. Um, Galium aparine, and I don't know why it's not aparinum. I've always wondered about that. Yeah, I had a funny experience. I love this herb. So there was a homeopathic group that would meet in Minneapolis and compare notes about different things. We're gonna do. A, we're gonna do. We proved gallium. We're gonna do a class on the gallium proving. Again, proving is when you give it until it produces symptoms and then you know what it's for in homeopathy and like treats like, cause what it cures. But so I went to the lecture and it was on the metal gallium, gallium metallicum. Huh. So they still haven't proved it. That's kind of a funny, funny mistake there. And um, um, so, uh, okay, so we might, Gather it, dry it, but gather it, tincture it fresh. Get that vanilla-like flavor in there. It does well in brandy. Um, also, though, you should at the same time make a tincture in uh, an oil, in some kind of oil. So far, I probably just used um, uh, 
olive oil. Haven't thought about it too much. But there might be some better oil. But it turns out that there are properties that are lipophilic that are extracted by by the um, um, by oil only. And um, I mentioned that study in um, my paper, which will be available to you guys. Lise Wolf brought this to my attention. She was studying it that all these um, lipophilic compounds really, so you need it in oil a lot of the time. Okay, just to give you an example, like, um, so when I had Lyme disease, I got swelling in the throat there, and um, I got infected mastoids, which is really, really hard to treat, but um, an infected back brain. I took for the, the, oh, I had Bartonella, that was a terrible co-infection, and I took um, Holly, which is for Hatred, feeling hated, that remedy, that remedies for either you feel irrational hatred or irrational hatred is projected against you. And that that remedy is like, like Bartonell is known for anger and hatred for acting out. And um, so this is like way beyond what we just talked about. Chamomile, where you have whining, peevish, complaining. This is like rage. And um holly is good for that and the, the bartonella felt like it was attacking me if it was a human being it hated me so it's attacking my brain and my heart within seven days almost within five days so uh i later used learned to use it in oil i also i used holly i used uh Lenarda fistulosa which was best in a rubbing alcohol so it wouldn't get into my hair then i used the um the uh Cleavers, oh, the lipophilic form, and um, so okay. And I've used it sometimes whenever there's there's swollen glands. It's easy to put it on the glands there and behind the ears and around that whole area. And so there's a good reason to have it. It's not bad to have it in oil. People haven't generally used it in oil, but and maybe perhaps you don't need to. Okay, uses um. Be that you saw that little tangled stalks and everything, and several herbalists from uh, from Rachel Bowen, formerly of Melbourne, Melbourne, Australia, Lise Wolf, Minneapolis, Sage Popham, Ashland, Oregon. He has a online school. Two, uh, they've all they all say it's for feeling tangled up, entangledness in relationships, can't get untangled. Um. So and all came to this conclusion independently, although they were looking at the plant, perhaps too. Okay, the plant also looks like long, like nerves. It looks like long, slender parts of the body, perhaps circulation, in the blood vessels, but it's not used for that really. Uh, it's used for the urethra, the bladder, the the Dorothy also says the plant looks like a male urethra long narrow um i actually think it's a prostate remedy not a urethritis remedy the way she had it um so yeah if there's more remedies i'm not aware if there's more um on the mental state that's but what i got uh okay entangled therefore for addictions in food and relationship and situations where one cannot shut off the mind for compulsive issues neuroses and nerve and um codependency that's pretty cool um the other bach flower remedy for that is uh um god um is entanglement did you say yeah i can't remember now oh uh, let's see centauri says lee could be i was thinking of something else oh well we'll leave that um I almost need some coffee here. <laughs> but ironically, the one that has cafe acid, right? Or just cleaver seeds <laughs> for you. Yeah. I remember Elise also saying a similar note that for clinging thoughts, like if you're having a hard time sleeping, you're talking about mental, emotional state, that cleavers cling so it can help you with the clinging thoughts. Well, that's interesting. That reminds me of chelidonium and homeopathic opium 
which are for th images you can't get out of your mind. So they might augment each other together. PSTD. Okay, yeah, and the whirling leaves around the stalks indicates for whirling thoughts that keep coming back to the same problem. Yeah, okay. Um, all right, lymphatics. So um, there, there are three main areas that it works, the lymphatics, the kidney bladder, and the nerves. We'll go over each one separately, and I've used it more for the lymphatics. It's cooling, and that indicates that it's useful, more useful in acute conditions because acute conditions tend to be inflamed. That means hot. And um, therefore, we need a cooling remedy, where, as I mentioned, contrasted it with calendula, which is warming and therefore is for old stagnant lymphatic congestion, where you want to move it out. And then in between them is red root or cyanothus. And that is for all sorts of lymphatic problems. So it's and it's neutral with regard to hot or cold. So that's kind of cool. We know what goes. We we have three basic lymphatic remedies. They'll cover a whole lot of territory. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Although it is traditionally given as a tear tincture, note the above study where an oil extract was shown effective against staph and other microbes. Oh, okay. Um, okay, let's see. Um, and the way the stock comes with the little clusters of leaves coming in kind of what reminds one of the lymphatic system draining an area. So, oh, okay. Um, kidney bladder, it's... So it has been used for bladder infections, urethritis, perhaps kidney infections. Um, yeah, Dorothy Hall. Buy this book if it's under $100. <laughs> Tremendous herbalist. She's dead now. She suppressed her work. She didn't even keep it in print. Um, so, uh, but she thought that um, male urethra because of the length of that that stock, but um, I have used it now for um, prostate problems for men, and I think that that's probably what it's for. Although someone said, "Well, it could be calcification along the the urethra. It's anti -calcific calcifying. It's used with with gravel root to get rid of calcifications." That's not a major use, but that would be kidney bladder again. Um, uh, well, Dorothy used it for urethritis in men. That's a little different than prostatitis. Um, yeah. Okay. All right, then we have nerves. The little seed balls on the end look like little nerve bulbs. Uh, he who must not be named, one of my... Native American mentors, and he suggested the use in elephant man's disease or neurofibromatosis. And I have confirmed that in a few cases. It at least is deeply palliative, putting people into remission for a long time or helping a great deal. So, um, but it's not just, it's uh, okay. So we have nervings, thing, many remedies that relax the nerves, but I think of cleavers more as a remedy, not for relaxing the nerves, not for sedating the nerves, but for nerve um, disease, nerve injuries and diseases, particularly diseases. So it's kind of unique that way. Um, okay, Dupuytren syndrome, Dupuytren's. That's when it gets to be kind of knotty along uh, over here, or it gets knotted up. And... Um, you can't expand your hand. It's very uncomfortable, and you can't do you can't do a lot of work with your hands. Uh, D u p e t r u y n apostrophe s dupetrines du dupetrines. There would be a long i there for the for the y in Dutch. Do you often combine that with um, Solomon seal? For the dupatrins? Oh, 
Uh, well, that's a good idea. I never have. It's partly because it works so well by itself. It's working over a couple dozen cases. And um, so I was teaching in Canberra, Australia, and one of the students in the class, Natasa Zarek, who Andy from Canberra and from Slow, um, Eastern Europe, um, she said, well, do you have anything for Dupuytrens? And I had not yet talked about it. I said, yes, I do. She said she had over 30 cases of people waiting for remedy. And well, it it may only cure, uh, It I, I think it cures about 75, or well, remission 75% of cases. One guy, he got temporary effects from it. So he added, he used it, um, used uh um frankincense powder that worked also and so and the solomon seal makes a lot of sense too so there are other possibilities then there's something that happens on the foot called morton's neuroma which is guess what just the exact same thing except it's on your foot doctors are so non-intuitive that they don't say they don't think oh that's that's you know the same condition there's also morton's toe it's not that that's a little different morton got around <laughs> <laughs> oh that sounds miserable though i mean you see dupentrins and that's got to be tough enough yeah yeah natasa said that it's mostly tradespeople that get this problem and she in fact had i said what you're a naturopath oh well, i made jewelry for 30 years so kind of fine use of the hands for over a long time I saw someone who I know someone who plays guitar a lot and and it's his the the fret the hand that goes along the frets. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um so anything acting on the nerves is gonna act on the skin too. So Aaron Poirier, who is a friend of Lisa and myself, helped set up that class at that conference in the country. It's not used it for eczema okay this is a very old use uh no that's chickweed that's used for eczema but they're very similar but this could be used for eczema with a lymphatic component um she combined it cleavers burdock violet and organ grapefruit so yeah and that was specifically a, a skin remedy that combination yep for for eczema oh Okay. Um, so then we have eyes. Um, my friend, oh yeah. So my friend Katie Higson, she is a, oh Tara knows her. She is a body worker in Cumberland, Maryland. Very intuitive and psychic somewhat and really tunes in. And she had a client who had a lack of REM motion in one of his eyes because a stick went through his eye in his eyeball when he was younger and caused a paralysis. Caused it the the eye couldn't go into REM sleep into dream sleep, which probably upset his dreams in his sleep. But at any rate, it, this had been four or five years, and she just had this intuition to try cleavers, and she she did, and his eye started like moving REM sleep, like right on the table, and and it cured him. <laughs> so yeah yeah this is intuitive though right i mean you get a lot of it from the doctrine of signatures which you're you definitely are um responsible for help bringing back into herbalism and then there's the just plain old intuitive component um yeah right So um, I haven't used cleavers too much. It's not, oh, I suppose it's a cooling remedy. It just hasn't come up a whole lot for me. Um, Lee, have you used it much? I have. Um, it's one of the one of the oils that I tried. I have um, nodules on my thyroid. And um, act um, Lee's actually showed that um, oak bark can work for that. Oh. Um, 
but I was trying other things too, just to get drainage and movement, <clears throat> excuse me, because I've also had a tonsillectomy. So I'm guessing there's probably scar tissue and I've used cleaver oil a lot in there. And now I'm actually trying chickweed. I'm, um, so I'm just trying different lymphatic oils. And then with cleavers with that <clears throat> whole like little ball nodule type of signatures, I'm trying to see if, you know, what will, um, you know, th that just made sense for me to use at the time too. And then now just chickweed, just trying to mix them up and seeing if we can shake things up, move it up, move it out. Mm -hmm. Neat. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I have some case history. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I have some case histories in the document. So that's interesting. Um, here's someone who used it for Raynaud's, which is increasing circulation in the hand. I generally use um, uh, safflower oil for that. Actually, some, well, if you see a lot of cases of that, some cleavers extracted in, in uh, safflower oil would be a good way to go. Dear medicine, so you're out walking in the fields and there's a big cluster of, of, um, Cleavers, this is an invasive plant from, well, it's not really invasive. It's a, it's a guest plant from 